so Moses just turned and he said, the Lord said, tell the priest his rod out. And the Hebrew actually reveals to us that the subterranean water supply uttered its voice. It said it uttered its voice. In other words, it said, because Habakkuk tells us that God came from Teman, the Holy One from Mount Paran, Selah. It means to pause calmly and think about this. It said that he came from Teman, and he came to rescue Moses at the Red Sea. Hallelujah. And so when he came to do this, it said that the water supply, he rode his fiery chariots down into the other side. And when he did, the water itself uttered its voice. And what did it say? I imagine it said, there's God. And they just stood up. The flood stood and began to applaud. And in the middle of the desert, in the middle of the desert, the Bible said the water congealed itself in its depths. In other words, it froze. It was like jello water. It was like frozen water. Isn't that amazing? And so now we know why the Scripture reveals to us that with a blast of his nostrils, he parted the sea. Because Job reveals that when God breathes, the frost comes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So in this time, in this political time that we're living in right now, I want to give you a few of this, uh, just some of these words. We were singing about some of it a while ago. And, um, but in this climate, this political climate that we live in, the Red Sea has become a rendezvous point. It's become a rendezvous point. You know, uh, in, on January 6th, well, it was back in, in uh, 21, that I stretched a rod out and I walked up to the reflecting pool. I guess it's a, considered the backside of the Capitol. And I walked up there and I took this rod. A pastor from Kentucky met me going down there and handed me this staff. <laughs> so I took this staff and I stretched it out, and, and it didn't dawn on me at the moment that I was stretching it out over the reflecting pool. And, and man, it started getting cold. I mean, it was cold now. Listen, it, it, it was what, what you call bone-chilling cold. And there's just nothing you could do to get warm. And this thing, and when I stretched that rod out, and by the time I got there, there were, there were Catholic people there. There were... Uh, Pentecostal people there <clears throat> I want to say there were Methodist people there they all just started gathering up around me like that and nobody was laughing nobody was making fun when I stretched that rod out man they stretched their hands out I mean now and I told the Red Sea I was going there to tell it to divide to part and so at 112 I picked up that that rod and I stretched it out I arrived at 111, picked it up at 112, and when I did, then I didn't know this, and I've got to talk in code right here because uh, Elon Musk hasn't bought YouTube yet. So I need to go ahead, <laughs> I need to go ahead and speak in code for a little while longer. But <laughs> yeah, but I I uh, I said yet. But when I stretched that rod out, then. I didn't know this, but at 112, they walked uh, papers into Congress that proved certain things had happened. And you, you understand what I'm saying. I just don't want them to cut us off. Uh, I'm certainly not afraid to say it, but I want you to hear it. And so they, uh, they proved what had taken place. And uh, how things were rigged and so forth. And what, what people didn't know was at that very moment they had arrested a man in Italy. And they had proven later that he used uh, Vatican satellites. That was really something. And what was really amazing to me was it wasn't long after that that the Vatican had a blackout for two or three days. I mean, just completely blacked out. Well, See, that wasn't known, but when that happened at that very moment, then the whole place exploded. It just came apart. I mean, now, it just came apart. And uh, from, the, from the fortress here, I'm going to be able to tell you a lot of things. 
going to be able to do specials and tell you some special prophetic things. That's what's in my heart to do. And so they, this whole thing started coming apart. Well, what, uh, some of you just to cut it shorter, a year, no, it was nine months, 9.7 months, I think, later. You know, I had given a word that the last fight would be over the unborn. And so we, uh, and there had to be a Red Sea time and an Elijah moment. So 9.7 months later, we ended up, something like that, we ended up on the backs, on the front side of the Capitol with the Justice Foundation. And I was invited, uh, me and Brother Timothy Dixon, and we were invited to go there. And I stretched out this rod right here on camera, and I held it out toward the Capitol, and the Lord said, call the sea back together. Well, you know, everybody expected it all to end, I guess, right then and there. But by the before an hour or two had passed, Facebook had fought, fell. And so after that, you know, they pronounced that, rebranded themselves. And so, uh, now, as a parent company, I guess. So, But watch this. What we didn't know now, I, that was a year, and then, uh, I mean, 21, and then 9.7 months or so uh, later, then that happened and so forth. Well, about two weeks ago, friend of mine sent me pictures of the very reflecting pool that I held the staff out over it the water turned black and they drained it and now it's dry it's dry now what do you think that's symbolic of the day I stretched it out about seven hours later there was an earthquake in the middle of the Israel crossed and here just a few days ago is the day that they crossed just, just a few days back. And the reflecting pool that I stretched the rod out over now is dry. So we were that far ahead in the spirit. Now, if you can hear it, hear it. And I know you can. But somehow or another I thought about something. Just, I'll, I'll just stay with me here. And so now it's dry. And so we were that far ahead in the spirit. But now is the legal time, the natural time that they're going to cross on dry land. See, it's already been ordered open. Now it's dried up. Now it was ordered to close several months back, and now it will close. But when it closes, it will close violently. Remember that. It wasn't a pretty sight when that water came crashing down on Pharaoh and his army. It, it, was, it was a violent overthrow. I'm going to say it just like that again. It was a violent overthrow. And, and when that water came down, but now remember this, it was in, it was the red that came down. And it's amazing that, you know, and they're in the middle of what they call an overthrow. And this and that, doing some things. The bears moving and so forth. A lot to that. Don't believe everything you hear. Now, <clears throat> So we're looking at a time now, and this brings me back to this. In this political climate we live in, the Red Sea is a run, has become a rendezvous point. That uh, this is now I'm speaking of, now, and I know my partners will hear it, but I, I want you to really tune in because I have to speak a, a little bit different. A, the, the Red Sea has parted to let Pharaoh go through it. See, now Pharaoh is confident that he can make it through. He's confident that he can. But while the people of God had a destiny, and Pharaoh had a destiny, so did the Red Sea. Now, what I mean by that is this. That day, when I stretched that rod out, it came apart that day. And I dare say, only seven or eight people stayed with the president. And so, sea has parted to let them overthrow and take down everything God's people are doing. Does that make sense, everybody with me? They, they believe the red has made a way and just stepped back and said, well, come on. Because nobody contested the fraud. Nobody did anything. Nobody stood up. Nobody spoke. 
only handfuls of people. And so they just could not. So they believe it parted for them. The only one thing that would have ever caused Pharaoh to go down into that sea after Moses was he believed he was a god, and he thought that sea parted for him. It's the only thing that would have ever possessed him to go down into that sea. And so does this, so does the Democrat Party, so does this evil thing that's going on. They believe that the sea, the red, sided with them and parted to let them in and do what they want to do. Because you can rest your mind at one thing, my brother and sister. There, there's no way that powers that be in this nation and the world, but especially this country, could be making the power plays it's making without both parties are on the same page. People say, well, we all need to get on the same page. Well, they are on the same page, and look what it got us. Look at the hell it got us. As soon as they got, but they, wasn't, they didn't come together in agreement for righteousness in the word. They came together to part the sea, let them have control. And now you see power plays like there's leaders gathered grabbing order. And they're starting to talk about it now. And they said, Netanyahu gone. Now they're after that one. They put a hook in his jaw. And the next thing you know, they drug a wild bear into their circus. And now they're over there trying to make the world hate the bear. And making him look like the enemy, but happen. I don't believe that, brother Robert. I don't care. Don't make much difference. People believe whatever they want to believe. But I'm telling you something. This thing is designed to bring in a new world order. It's a truth. New world order brought to you by Soros and company. All of this coming in. But this is the time kings rendezvous at the Red Sea to meet their destinies. And kings don't even know why they're making the decisions they're making. Suddenly it comes into their mind, I'll just go here. I'll just do this. And suddenly it comes into their mind, this is what they're going to do. I heard it in the spirit of what I heard that coming. And I saw him just kind of look around surprised. And then suddenly he shows up at the White House standing behind the presidential podium. He shouldn't be standing behind that. He's a former president. He's not the president. Why is he standing behind that with a seal in front of him? Why did they give him that place of prominence? Because he came back and revealed. What's going on? Yeah, well, you know, you're getting close to getting shut down here. <clears throat> when he was asked in a video on tape he can't deny it when you're saying it I remember one time he tried to deny something he said I don't know if any of you remember that but he tried to deny something he said and one of his own staff members said sir your own video saying it <laughs> he couldn't get around it so <clears throat> he said when asked would you be up for a third term he said oh if I could Maybe sit in a basement in my sweats or something, however he said it. He said, and put an earpiece in somebody's ear. He said, I would, I would totally be up for that. And I could run it from there. And then he shows up at the White House and he walks up behind the podium that God already said wasn't his because his seal fell off of it when he stood there. And then he stood, and that was in 2010, it fell off of it. People say, well, you know, these prophets, they, they missed it. They missed it. Man, would you just shut up? They missed it. They missed it. Really? Let me tell you, if you understood how the prophetic works, you would un you're talking about things you know nothing about. You hardly know anything about other than you think a, a prophet is some kind of clairvoyant uh, fortune teller. It's amazing, people's knowledge of prophets. I was at a restaurant the other night, and I was invited there to be there, Robin and I, with some very important people to discuss some very important things. And we were walking out that night, and we was in this little private thing, and so when we came back out and was walking out the end of the night, there was a lady sitting there who waited tables. I guess she waited tables. She looked like that's what she did, her uniform, I mean. 
and she was sitting there and she looked so tired to me and I just stopped and looked at her and I said are you tired you worked hard today she said well not really I just hadn't slept much and she said I, I only slept so many hours and so many days and I looked at her and I was, and the spirit of the Lord came on me and a word a prophetic word came up in me and I looked at her and I said it'll be all right I said this family situation will soon settle down and there'll be great peace come in your home she said wait what what I said there, there'll be this family matter will settle down and, and you know and she said wait are you a are, are you a clairvoyant are you a are you a, 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 a mystic or something whatever she said well I'm not down in her she didn't know what she's not even used to the prophet and be introduced to it and so she looked I said no ma'am no ma'am I said I heard it in I heard it in here when I was standing here and she said man I said that's that's right isn't it yes it's right I said my mother just moved in with me it'll be all right things will soon settle and so it brought her great peace and I said Lord and I prayed over her right there I, de I never even put my hand on her. I just prayed over her in Jesus name now she was introduced to the prophetic but she thought it was what the world calls a clairvoyant or something or no, she said clairvoyant ESP. That's what she said, like a mind reader. Well, I wasn't a mind reader. I don't know what's in anybody's mind unless the Holy Ghost tells me. And so he he only he brings up words that bring people peace. God already tore the the seal off of him. He can't have that. And the Lord's about to remove the seal off of this one too. He never put it on it's there illegally and it will come off if it has to blow off and so here is the thing and he's and so he but they give him the place of prominence he gets up there and the first thing he says is thing absolutely what is he going to do i mean they just told the reporter everybody else was all around and they were just almost you know it's like one of them old uh, Bible movies when somebody's named the king. I, I remember watching a, a Joseph reenaction one time, and somebody, somebody in his court was trying to touch Joseph as he walked by. He was going. They were acting like he was a god. And so there he was. He proved what he was doing. And so uh, every all the big show in this before, and I might as well say it again. You're watching the greatest show on earth. You know, you thought Ringling Brothers and Barnum and Bailey was, but oh no, no, no! This got you got all these. You got the bearded lady. It's, it's the bearded lady. It's a man dressed as a woman went in and became the associate health care director or something. That's the bearded lady. That's in the circus. That's the big draw. Oh yeah, you've got you've even got shows like Come and Watch. You know, you know, come and watch the Supreme just and watch her as she sits there and acts stupid. And so all of this is going on and everybody gathering around the circus. Everybody ha was handed out handbills for it. And then you see all of this going on. And the biggest part of the show is come and watch the prancing donkeys lead around the trained elephants. All these trained elephants on the big show. Under the big top. Oh yeah, you, you've got some. You've got some trained elephants running around, and then all of a sudden, all the trained elephants, everything that's going on, they go to make him look like a hero. And the whole time, you've got this. You've got this crooked bunch that's trying to run this country, and they're all out there pulling all these people together. You can see one bullet fly while he was walking. It's amazing how they can turn it on and off when they want to. And then suddenly you got all these people there trying to make everybody, uh, I mean, come on, everything. You, you know, you cut your fingernails. Everything is just, it's a big show. But the thing that's not pleasing and the thing that's not pleasant and the thing that, that's, and that is not going to work. And that you will pay for. And Soros, I don't care if, I don't care who you are, you do that and you have a harvest coming to you. And it's about to come now. 
at the Red Sea. Well, that don't make you popular, Brother Robin. I didn't come on here to be popular. Never have. Now watch this. So they think right now, all these trained rhinos, uh, rhino, did I say that? All, all these trained elephants have split the sea. <laughs> And, and they think that they've split. Oh, oh, now, wait a minute. Now, there is some rogue elephants. Oh, yeah. Biggest, one of the biggest ones I know is a, a young man named Cawthorn. He comes in rogue, man. His ears are moving. You know them rogue elephants. They don't, the trained elephants come in and just come in and do this. And they come in and take a paintbrush in their, in their trunk and paint a pretty flower. But a rogue elephant comes in. I mean, them ears are moving. You better get out of his way. They don't want them in the circus. They don't like that. And so the Lord gave me a word not long ago. Remember this? And we posted, the Lord said, he told me, he said, he's a jackal. He's a jackal. Well, I didn't know uh, that, you know, I didn't think about this, but when it came down to that, Jesus called Herod a, a fox. And foxes, in Hebrew, is a, it means jackal. So he called him a jackal because Herod was illegitimate. Herod was not, and his mother was an Arab. He wasn't a Jew. And he was a psychotic. And Jesus called him a fox. Did you tell that old fox? Well, I didn't realize that then. I just, jackal is someone who does the bidding for someone higher than them. And they're illegitimate in the Bible. So here we have this jackal. And then all of a sudden, at the, on, the, on Capitol Hill, a rabid fox shows up on Capitol Hill and they still get rabies shots. Then they found a den of foxes. All, they had to put them all down. They had to put them all down. They could not let them continue. And so they put the fox down. Oh, yeah. And one of the liberal news networks that covered that turned around and said, listen to what they said. They said it was uh, uh, like a, a fox nation. They were throwing it at fox. New president before even the votes had come in. Don't fool yourself. The jackal has his own network, and it's the most deceiving one, and that's where all the trained elephants run to. They don't let rogue elephants on there. And if you ask some of them, why don't you, why don't you, well, this one talks bold, and this one talks bold, and this one, these are saying whatever they let them say. If they say something that they don't want them to say, they will cut them off, and they will tell them to shut up, and they will shut up. Don't, tell, don't, don't even try to defend that because I already heard it firsthand from, from a, the source. They told them, I know I can't say what I need to, but I, I have to, we have to be some kind of voice on here. The blue, something scared somebody out of their mind. A man named Musk comes on the scene and he says, I'm going to buy Twitter. No, no, we're not going to let you. And the biggest opposition he had was, was kin to the sheik in Saudi Arabia, you know, because he don't like free speech. And he said, no, no, no. And he said, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. And he did. He did. Well, I hadn't thought about this, but Robin had texted me, and she put this prophetic word together, and it was amazing. I thought, my goodness, look at this. Because I've quoted the scripture I don't know how many times, but I've never put that together. And she texted me. She said, you know, Ecclesiastes 10, 20. She said, don't curse the king. Not in your thought are the rich in your bedchamber. Not in your, even in your thought. Because a bird of the air will carry the voice. And he that hath wings will go tell the matter. And what is Twitter's logo? It's a bird of the air. And then Robin told me this, that there's a little more you hadn't added to that. He said, your name is Robin and my name is Robin. We're birds. And we're standing up here telling all of this. See, see, 
they're fulfilling prophecy. Kings line themselves up to be a fulfillment of prophecy. And so they're afraid that all the, what was it, 240 million or thousand tweets, somebody said earlier, mean tweets from the, I don't know, something to that effect. But anyway, so let me continue on because I don't want to just, just keep on at it right here. But in in this political climate, we live in the Red Sea, uh, where the Red Sea is a rendezvous point for those uh, kings that are coming to their destiny. Now, destiny is not a predestination. In other words, nobody's predestined when they're born to go to heaven or hell. There's a plan that's predestined that will take you to heaven and one that will you will go straight to hell on. And so you have to choose the plan that's predestined that you are a free moral agent, the Baptist church used to say. And so you choose. Now, <clears throat> they're coming to this time. Uh, Pharaoh had a destiny. God gave him choices. You know that, don't you? God told Pharaoh, said, do this and this will happen, do this and this will happen. He showed him two roads of destiny he could travel. And he chose the other. So at the Red Sea, it's coming down to kings of the White House and tell them what he's doing. Because this is the time kings start pulling themselves into a prophetic place to where they're going. They've chosen their roads, and they will be exposed. Now, <clears throat> and when the Red Sea crashes down, remember that. Remember that. The, this jackalist party has entered the Red Sea because they think they're holding it open for them. But they have entered the Red Sea, <clears throat> and at some point, soon it's going to suddenly come down on them so all you bunch of trained elephants better throw down your paintbrushes and jump back over better do that very quick because I found something in scripture the other day studied it all day long the Lord whispered it to me and I sat down at my desk in my encounter room and started going through it took all day long and he showed me what's about to take place now I had a prophetic dream <clears throat> the other night, and I, I heard a conversation. And I hear, I hear these sometimes. People say, you hear voices? <laughs> well, yes, but it's the voice of the Holy Ghost. <clears throat> and sometimes he'll carry me into a place, and I'll get to hear other conversations. And um, I heard this conversation. I was listening, and the... It was they would have called him a prime minister or president or what, but it was an ancient one. I could tell because even in my dream when I was looking at him, he was in black and white, and he had a suit on and tie. He wasn't bald, but he didn't have a lot of hair. But it kind of favored Anita Khrushchev, but not quite. He wasn't that big. He was smaller. And he, but I, he looked at me, and this is it. This wasn't. This was more of a. I didn't say something one night, and it it thwart, and, and when I told it to the right people, it stopped a big, I believe it was, I'm telling you I heard, I heard, and the Lord said to tell you this, was something on his head, and I don't know what it was, but he looked at me, and this is what he said, and he, he said, and I knew that he listened to the 11th hour, he listened to this program. And he looked at me and said, is it time for us to go back home now? Is it time for us to pull back, to go back back now? And he was so excited to get to go back. Now, I heard that just as, and could see the man when he asked me, because he was listening to the prophets, and he was watching the 11th hour. And so he asked me in person, is it time for me to go back now? To go back to my homeland. In other words, time for us to go back now? And I said, yes. Yes. So things are shaping up. Things are, are happening right now. Now, um, yeah, I'm going to do a very special stream today. I'll be, on, I'll be here at the Fortress doing a stream with uh, Steve Schultz today. It'll be at 2.30, I think, Central Time. And uh, you don't want to miss that and see who's going to be on the stream. 
just be three of us, I think. And so, anyway, I was led to tell you that. Now, let me finish this up. This is a time when kings and rulers line up to fulfill prophecy. They have chosen their paths. They have, uh, they have a, a predestined end. And world leaders have, uh, have positioned themselves in places like people to oust him, his own people. In the middle of this, suddenly Elon Musk decides to take over Twitter in the time of Elisha, Ecclesiastes 10, 20. And a bird of the air will carry the voice. He that hath wings that can tell the matter. So we're talking about this is the time when world leaders, king, the scripture, the Red Sea, fulfilled its destiny. We will see if this one does. See, that day at the Red Sea, the destiny. Moses fulfilled a destiny in the time of the prophet Moses. And Pharaoh fulfilled a destiny. But the Red Sea fulfilled its destiny, too. And so now we're going to see if the Red Sea will fulfill its destiny. And I, you know I'm talking about the political party of the Red. We cannot, we don't need any more trained elephants. We don't need any more people that's just standing around with their fingers stuck where the sun don't shine and just doing nothing but eating free meals and sitting around and talking smack whatever anybody wants to hear. What we need is rogue elephants that will come in and say, by God, this ends today. What are you going to do? Are you going to wait till the jackal just falls flat on his face and you have to drag him out by his ankles in front of a camera? I mean, that's what's coming, you know. And don't think that you got his body double is going to do all of this because people are, ain't that stupid. You're going to, I mean, this thing is about over and you know it's over. You better run or you better hide because there's really nowhere else to go. It's high tide now and the Red Sea is about to fulfill its destiny. Hallelujah. Well, it's been a good 11th hour today, hasn't it? I mean, I mean here... At the fortress, I don't know what anybody's saying about how they like the new fortress and all of that. Uh, Roxanne's just doing like this, Evan, because she's not following it all today. She don't have her phone, and so. Um, but I want to. I want to thank you for tuning in. And we all do. It's been a good time. It's different to us here, uh, and it's um, it's really neat. And we're going to be able to do a lot of things here, a lot of things. Be sure and watch today on on. Uh, I th on the Elijah stream, I think, was where it'll be on. Well, I know it's where it'll be. I, as, I'm not sure if it's on YouTube or Rumble. Rumble, I think it's going to be. I think it's going to be on Rumble, the two things. So you don't want to miss that. Check Steve's uh, itinerary. Now, I want to give you opportunity to give today. And uh, soon Christo will be right back here te uh, teaching us on giving and receiving. Hallelujah. But today, uh, her dad's going to do it. And I'm going to talk to you about giving and receiving. And I want to talk to you about uh, Luke 6 and 38. Now, let's look at that right quick. And, um, and we don't know. It may turn into a long quick. But let's look at it right now. Luke 6 and verse 38. Now, this is the words in red. You know, all the Bible is like courtrooms all over the world. I mean, all over the nation here. But the words in red are the Supreme Court. And this is in red. And he's not just talking about finances, but he is talking about anything you give. You know, people say, well, I don't have no friends. I don't have any friends. Well, the scripture says, show yourself friendly and you'll have friends. So you need to remember that's a seed that reaps friends. And so it talks about with whatever judgment you judge, that you'll be judged. That's whatever you give. See, that's something else to give. And everything you do is a seed. But it don't exclude finances. I mean, it's talking about everything, but it also includes prosperity in, financial, in the financial realm. God don't want you broke. He don't want you poor. He don't want that because he, you will spread the gospel to the world, and he knows it, and the devil knows it. But the only anointing the devil has left is money. 
He's fallen from heaven. He don't have any anointing left. All he has is money. And he would kill a thousand people to get five dollars. He don't care. He has to robe himself. And when you start talking about prosperity and finances, he goes ballistic. He starts stirring up all of his voodoo chant people. He starts stirring up witchcraft people, warlocks. He starts doing everything he can, and they start their chants. We're into some chickens and all this kind of stuff, you know. <laughs> I mean, they start that stuff, you know. Oh, great. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. And they're dancing around their voodoo chants. Pull a snake out and put it around them. Hold up a big snake like that kid you see, and their eyes are about this big. <laughs> they look. They just think any minute that thing's going to turn around and just swallow them from the head down. And they start all this stuff because you would dare talk about prosperity and take Satan's anointing and strip it from him. Yes, we would. And you are powerless to stop it, you voodoo snouts. You're powerless to stop it. Hallelujah. battle for the portals has been going on for a little while now and the prophets are standing and battling for control of the portal the portals of heaven the windows of heaven that are opening the windows of heaven are opening to bring and rain prosperity down on God's people and to bring about this last revival and this revival that will determine the destiny of a billion souls so these portals open and that's why all the voodoo queens and the voodoo uh, warlocks and all these people are coming out witchcraft is manipulation Wiccan is just a bunch of lust out in a pine tree all of this is going on but voodoo brings witchcraft over into the creative realm that's why they have these little dolls they stick a needle in that's why they have it let me tell you a story about voodoo voodoo in the south it's doo doo But you know, oh yeah, brother, why do you talk like that? I don't know. I just do. Because <clears throat> that's, <the> <laughs> that's the way the Lord brought it to me. Now, John Lake was in Africa. And John Lake, now let, me t- let me talk to you a minute just about this. And then we, we'll finish our offering. John Lake was in Africa. He, he was uh, talking to this chief tribal chief and you know John Lake the man <laughs> awesome and so <clears throat> he's in Africa and that's where he did a lot of his big work and a lot of voodoos there a lot of witch doctors and things and this one chief looked at brother Lake and said now there's this chief that lives 60 miles from here and he pulled this little doll out and he started, he tied something around it or either grabbed it and choked it. And he began to choke this doll. And he said, now tomorrow by uh, dinner time or 12 o'clock, I think it was, said that man, I had to ride and go to that. This was way back when they rode horses. And that's really all he had. And he, he took off the next day, rode 60 miles on his horse to meet the other chief and didn't tell the other guy anything about it. And the other guy was out there around his cattle watching his cattle and just about 12 o'clock or whatever time that guy said that chief grabbed his throat and fell off his horse and was being choked I just couldn't hardly believe that he said I jumped off my horse and got down over him and rebuked it in the name of Jesus and instantly he was delivered but he said that's what kind of power the demonic has within its own ranks you see that And so, but the name of Jesus delivered him at like the snap of a finger. And so all of you, uh, I'm going to tell you something right now. I want you to listen to this now. And I'm not talking to our partners. I'm talking about to all the, the voodoo, voodoo people. I'm going to show you something. Philippians 2, 9, 10, and 11 declares this. That God has given Jesus a name above every name. That at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow of things in heaven, things in earth, and things under the earth. And that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord 
to the glory of God the Father. So right now, we bind that voodoo spirit that would try to come against us or our partner. I bind that and cast it down in the name above all names, the name of Jesus, and instantly you're free. Hallelujah. Now, Isaiah 54, 17 declares this. Listen to this. Isaiah 54, verse 17. Every tongue that shall rise against thee in judgment, thou shalt condemn it. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and their righteousness is of me, saith Yahweh. So when I can prosper, and every tongue, because it was words that they used to forge it with, and every tongue that shall rise against you, every spell, every incantation, everything that rises against you in judgment, you have the power to condemn it and prove it in the wrong. This is a, uh, your heritage because you're a servant of the Lord. Well, prophets are servants of the Lord. And so he says he does nothing without telling his servants, the prophets. So right now I have the right and the authority to condemn that over my partners and over everyone that's listening right now, that witchcraft and voodoo and all of this stuff from Haiti even, and those working in Haiti, bringing the people to Jesus, working there as missionaries, I break every voodoo spell over you that they're, they're trying to cast on you, trying to hold you down. Haiti will be saved. Hallelujah. Then we have Romans 8, 2 that John Lake used. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law. Regulate yourself against the bubonic plague. He said, I use Romans 8, 2. And he said, it comes up out of me and the spirit of God, the Holy Ghost lives inside of me and rises up in where that's what he says now. He something to that effect now listen to this and here's the last scripture and this now that, that I'm going to tell you right now now all of you this is to all of you that are casting spells witchcraft incantations everything trying to destroy God's people I'm going to tell you something you have tore your playhouse down now I want you to listen to this because right now if you're not going to turn and you're not going to repent, then I stand on these scriptures. Here it comes. Are you ready? You kept pushing and you kept pushing. Oh, let the wickedness of the wicked come to an end. But establish the just for the righteous. God trieth the hearts and reigns. My defense is of God, which saveth the upright in heart. God judgeth the righteous and God is angry with the wicked every day. If he turn not, he will wet his sword. He hath bent his bow. If you're not going to turn, he's already wet his sword and bent his bow. He made it ready. He hath also prepared for him the persecutors. Behold, he travaileth with iniquity and hath conceived mischief. Behold, he travaileth with iniquity and hath conceived mischief and brought forth falsehoods. He made a pit and digged it and is fallen into the ditch which he made his mischief shall return upon his own head and his violent dealings shall come down upon his own hate on his crown i will praise the lord according to his righteousness and will sing praise to the name of the lord most high so right now every incantation everything every spell every point of wickedness that's come against my partners, against this family, against this ministry, against anywhere this authority reaches as a prophet in the name of Jesus, that this wickedness, they have dug a hole that they themselves will fall into, and this wickedness will return upon their own head. In Jesus' name, I call for that to be so, Lord. Hallelujah those that are listening that don't want that harvest Lord let them be born again right now if you're out there and you're not saved you say this right now and mean it say I believe in my heart Lord Jesus that you are my Lord and personal Savior and from this day forward you are my Lord and Master and I give you all I am forgive me of my sins I renounce wickedness witchcraft idolatry all of those sins 
I renounce anything in my life that's not pleasing to you. And from this day forward, I will follow you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Now, that was all over the offering. So we're back to Luke 6, 38. Give, and it shall be given unto me. Well, I'm putting it in the first person now. You say me. Me. Good measure. Pressed down. Shaken together. And running over shall men give unto my bosom. For with the same measure that I'm giving, it'll be measured back to me again. Say, I believe it. I receive it. I call it done. In Jesus' name. Now, see, you can expect now a great harvest from what the seed you give today. Amen. And Jesus is a seed. He said himself, I'm a seed that, that fell to the tither. If you're tithing today, I want you to, there's a special blessing on the tither. Malachi 3, you can start in about verse 10, and you can say this out loud, and you can pray it with me as I bring all my tithe into the storehouse, that there may be meat in the house of the Lord. And I prove you now herewith, saith the Lord of hosts. I prove you now. If you'll not open me the windows of heaven, pour me out a blessing that there shall not be room enough to receive it. And rebuke the devourer for my sake, that he not destroy the fruits of, of my ground. Neither shall my vine cast her fruit before its time in the field, saith the Lord of hosts. Say this with me. And all nations shall call me blessed all nationalities shall call me blessed all ethnic groups shall call me blessed for I shall be a delightsome land saith the Lord of hosts now say I believe it I receive it I call it done in Jesus name now the ways you can give will be in the description today and uh, the fortress we're still adding to it every all this all the time I don't know if it's on the screen but if not it will be in the description and you can just go there and, and give securely amen well it's been a good 11th hour it's been a good time right here in the fortress I want to thank all of you for tuning in be sure and and look at uh, Steve's uh, stream today Steve Schultz the Elijah stream it'll be on rumble today and uh, I want you to remember this. You know, if you're born again, you ought to speak in tongues. You ought to. Somebody starts trying to cast a spell at you, just look at them in the face and go, Oh, I mean, praying in tongues is powerful, man. There was a guy came in a bar one night. Came in a bar. A bar. If there's anywhere it won't work, it ought to be a bar. He came in a bar one night, you know, and, and because people say, Oh, them tongues are of the devil. Well, before I got saved, I played in a lot of places. And I played in places where every manifestation of the devil you could imagine showed up. But I never heard of the tongues. Never heard that. Somebody one night, one where I was playing, they were telling this story. Said he came in one night, said he, he sat down. His eyes was big. He sat down at the table with his friends. He set a beer in front of him. And he just sat back. He looked at his friend. They had their beers. And his friend said, what is wrong with you? What's wrong? His eyes was big. He said, listen, man, listen to this. He said, and he had his beer in his hand. He said, what is that? What is that? He said, his friend said, my God, man, that's the Holy Ghost. You better get out of here. <laughs> and the guy just got up and took off. <laughs> somehow, somehow before he came that night, he got hold of the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Some, somebody was praying. So how do you get to speak in tongues like that? Well, you just simply say and mean it. The same way you got saved. Now, the Holy Ghost baptized you in Jesus when you got saved. Now Jesus is going to baptize you in the Holy Ghost. And you know, when you're underwater, talking sounds funny. It does. So here it goes. You just say, Lord Jesus, thank you for saving me. Baptize me now in the mighty Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in other tongues as the Spirit tells me what to say. Now, thank you, Jesus. Now, thank you, Lord. I thank you. I praise you. Now, now, when you, while you're praising him, you're just praising him, shift over into those sounds you hear right in here. 
Come on, everybody in the studio here, everybody in the fortress here, start doing that right now. And Lord, we praise you. Frito cane, man, grosa le carede, erisho cora bambrondo, così le arare cele. I carate paro si canjuli kenda bale pente. That works in every nation on the planet. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, until next time, we gather together right here around God's Word. I want you to remember something. Remember this. People say, well, you mean the Holy Ghost would be in a bar? The Holy Ghost is in every room, behind every commode, behind every door of ill repute, behind every corner, crook, and cranny of this whole earth. That day in the upper room,